something so big and so vast yet so vulnerable. It's crazy to think of what that could be. And there's only one answer. Our oceans. They cover Earth more than 50%. Yet no one's paying attention to all the overfishing, pollution, and animals. My speech today is about trying to persuade you to join these movements. Not just the sea turtles and the whales and the dolphins, but all of the movements, our whole oceans as a group. First, I want to discuss the overfishing. Overfishing has come to a lot of people's attention. Barack Obama, Teddy Roosevelt, they've set up aquatic uh, protection um, charities, I guess you can call them, uh, to uh, stop the fishers that are overfishing. Well, yes, we do have supply and demand. In certain areas, they have protected sea life. They have a protected area, which is now covering a quarter of our oceans. Um, as well as my second point being the pollution. While overfishing is important, and yes, it is hurting us, that's something that's going to be very hard to stop when people keep eating fish and people see it as a delicacy. So then we go to the pollution. The things that we throw in the ocean, the things that we throw out our windows, where do you think that goes? It doesn't just find its way to the dump. It finds its way all over our earth. And now that's causing a problem to our animals in the sea. We have pollution and not just trash, but oil pollution, chemical pollution, things that are being flooded into our waters that are hurting us, that are detrimental to us. And everyone sees the oceans as a beautiful place to take a vacation. When you first think of vacation, you think, I want to go to the beach where I can lay in the sand and play in the ocean. But if we keep polluting our oceans, will there be any more sea to go visit? Will there be any more beaches to enjoy that aren't filled with trash, filled with dirty water, filled with all the problems that we're facing? And lastly, our animals that are in our sea. We are having so many genetic malfunctions with species that are in our sea. You now have two-headed fishes that shouldn't be there. You have just unthinkable things. While the ocean is not fully discovered, there are things that we are finding that all this pollution and all this overfishing and all these issues are causing. Yes, we have the plastic straw or paper straw to stop from the plastic straws, to stop for them to end up in our oceans. But that doesn't even make up half of the things that we have to deal with. Why saving our sea is so important is that it's, there's growing evidence um, that preserving precious areas not only stop overfishing and pollution in our animals, it can lessen the impact of climate control. And that's by Cynthia Barrett from the National Geographic. So joining all these movements is something I want to persuade you to do. It's something that I want you to see that's so important. If you value our oceans, you value the f animals in there, the helpless animals. And if you enjoy fishing, do it in moderation. Understand that we are facing a crisis. I mean... You have Theodore Roosevelt, from his time, he has set aside more than 1,200 marine protected areas that cover more than a quarter, but they aren't halting the rapid decline of marine life, says Robert Coons Craig from the University of Utah. So even though the things that you may do may not be big, they can help. You have a diver who wakes up every morning and he tries to take out as much trash from the ocean floor as he can. And this is what he has made his life to revolve around. He sees what we are going through. So in conclusion, I hope I've put the idea of how important saving our oceans can be by 
stopping the overfishing, by stopping the pollution, and by saving our sea life. Thank you.